Okay, continuing on with Be Thou My Vision. So hopefully uh, last week's uh, came together for you, the uh, initial arrangement. So we're going to talk about a few things today. Um, one is uh, different harmonization of the same melody. Um, one of the reasons I do that is just to kind of drive home the concept so that you have it in mind that most songs can be harmonized in more than one way. That doesn't mean you necessarily want to, but songs like um, Be Thou My Vision works very well, especially it's a very short song. So if you're going to play it more than once through, then, you know, it makes it a little bit more interesting to not play it the exact same way each time. Um, so the harmonization that I have here um, for today is right out of a hymnal. So this is probably the way that it was originally harmonized um, when they first, you know, put it into the hymnal. And I don't know exactly when that was, but I think um, this particular hymn is quite ancient. Um, so we'll get into it. The other thing we're going to talk about is um, intros. Let me tell you what's on this sheet. The first four sheets are the basic, the first four lines are the basic arrangement. The fifth line is an alternate to line three. And then down at the bottom, I have intros and interludes. So let's talk about the intros and interludes first. So uh, you'll notice that I have um, notes in parentheses. The notes that are in parentheses are eighth note pairs. So to help you count through it. So like I'll play the first, um, uh, first measure of the intros. So that would be one and two and three and. Okay, because we have three pairs of eighth notes. One and two and three and. and. Then when we get to the next measure, we have a pair of eighth notes, one and, and then we just have a strum, two, three, because we're in three quarter time, so we have to account for all three beats. So that would go one and two and three and one and two, three. Getting to the next measure, we have a pair of eighth notes. That would be one and. The strum would be two. And then three and for the last pair of eighth notes. So we have one and two, three and. One and two, three and. Then we get to the final measure. One and two, three. So I'm going to go ahead and play that entire line. One, two, three, one and two and three and one and two, three, one and two, three and one and two, three. Looking at the next line, we have a pair of eighth notes, so that's one and, and then we have two and three two and three, the beats. So we have one and two, three. We get to the next measure. We don't have any eighth notes. We just have one, two. One, two, three. We have to account for that third beat. And we get to the final two measures. We have a pair of eighth notes. One and two, three. ahead and play through that second line now. One and two, three, one, two, three, one and two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so you can see even though we have the, um, going back to that first measure in the intros and interludes, um, we have it three, two, oh, oh, so, but that is, we'll want to have our hand on the entire chord in order to do that. It's a G chord. One and two and, and then when 
I play the three down to the two, I'm just using my first finger. And then the next chord is E minor. So we put our hand on an E minor. Okay, I'm telling you this because I don't like to write too many things in because I'm just afraid it's going to get muddy. So I figure I'll just give you the information and you can write it in wherever, you know, so maybe you can do it in red pen or something or whatever so that it, um, you know, it doesn't muddy up the works too much. So you have some contrast. So once again, that, fir that first two measures, one and two and three and one and two, three. The next measure, one and two. And then, so I'm playing the one and two. Once again, my hand is on the G chord. And then I'll just lift up the middle finger. This way things keep ringing. We like that. One and two, three and. And then we get to the next chord, which is a C major seven. One and two, three. Down to line two. One and two. Once again, using that first finger to do the passing bass note because we want everything to ring. One and two, three. One, two, three. One and two, three. One, two. So we're just using... Um, three chords here. We're using G's and E minors and C's or C major seven. Okay. So what I'm saying is, is we can use any combination of what's there, any combination of any two measures. Um, uh, well, I shouldn't say it that way. We want it. We don't, we'd want to use the first two measures in each case on each line. We can repeat the first two measures if we want, or we can play the first two measures and then the second two measures as an introduction. It doesn't matter. What I mean by that is if you are playing an introduction to this song, you could do just the first two measures. One and two and three and one and two and just do that again. One and two and three and one and then start the song. Right? Or you can play the first two measures and the second two measures, okay? Or you can play the first two measures of line, of the first line of interludes, and you can play the first two measures of the second line of interludes. You, can, you don't really want to start with the second set of measures in each case because they're both C chords, if that makes sense to you, because we're in the key of G, so we want to establish a G tonality. Okay, we'll come back to that. So now getting into the arrangement, it's, it's, a, it's essentially exactly the same, except we've reharmonized it. And you can put both of the sheets together and look at the differences. They aren't huge, but they're there. So we have the, uh, the first line, the first measure is the same. Now in the reharmonization, we're going to a C chord. in the original we had an E minor. We're going to go to a C now. And then we're going to go to the E minor where we had the C last week. Okay? After that G is just an arpeggio to fill to get us into the next um, next line. So I'll put that in. So the next line starts with the D, two zero zero two. Okay, so I'm just going to do an arpeggio to get to that. So I'll start from the beginning. So that arpeggio is on two and three and the chord is on one and the arpeggio is on two and three and I'll do that one more time. One, two and three and one, two, three. Okay, 
So let's see what's different about the second line is we just stay on the D. In the original arrangement, we went back to the G in the second measure. In this one, we're just going to stay on the D. Sorry. Okay. Then what we'll do is we'll leave our pinky where it is, and we'll build the rest of the C chord there. So we have three, 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 two, open, three, open. And then we have our pinky already on that melody note. That three, and then we lift it up for the open. And then to the D. Okay, so once again, the differences are slight, but they're there. So I'm going to play that from the beginning. One, two, three. Now looking at line three, in last week's arrangement we were on an E minor going to a C major seven. This time we're going to go from a C to a G. Okay, so we have the C. Okay, that's always a little tricky to play when you're playing that. Because you got to bring that middle finger down. And you want it when you bring that middle finger down, and then we're using our pinky for that third fret. You want to be pretty exact if possible because you once again you want things to ring. So it takes a little doing. I mean that's something that I have to think about in order to get it clean. And every now and then I don't get it clean, but. Then we get back to the G chord, and we'll simply just drop the ring finger. I'm Xing out the A string, you can see there. This way all we have to do is move one finger to get to the next chord, because it happens pretty quick. Then we'll go to... Um, E minor 7, whereas in the arrangement last week it was a G. There's that situation again. We're on the E minor 7 to the open G. And then we want to try to get that pinky in there clean so everything rings. So we have that dissonance. Once again, not the end of the world if you don't get it, but it's cool if you can get it then to a little C triad, to a D. Last week we just stayed on the C there, we just stayed, which is fine. But this week we're going to go to, to a D. And then, let me see, the end is the exact same as last week. play that from the beginning. So now we want to, um, oh, let's look at the alternate. So the, where it says all three, um, what happens there is the first two measures of the third line are the same, but then what I did um, on the last two measures, the E minor to the C, I just brought the melody up an octave. 
So looking at all, the alternate line three, starts the same as the regular line three. And then, we, and then to continue on, we're using the exact same notes, but we're just gonna do them up an octave. Okay? the same and that's just an alternate um, doesn't have to be but I wanted to throw that in once again uh, gives you a little variety um, in the in the performance of the song so then to put it all together we want to use the intros and interludes and the interlude would be what happens at the end of the song so in other words when you get to that very last G chord on the fourth line down, okay? That would be where you could put one of the interludes. Right, so instead of just playing that last G chord, I jumped down to the intros and interludes section and did one of those instead and that you only need to do that if you're going to repeat the song or if you just want to tag an ending onto the song. So let me put that all together for you so you see what I mean. So what I'm going to do is for my intro, I'm just going to play the first line that we have there under intros and interludes. And then I'm going to play the song. And then when I get to that final G chord, I'm going to play the second line of in, um in intros and interludes, and I'll use that as my ending, okay? I could use it as a transition to get back to the beginning, but I'll just use it as an ending, okay? So once again, here we go. One, two, three. Starting the song. myself off guard. I actually didn't do that really clean, but I think you get the idea. Um, now I'm going to play it again, and this time I'm going to use the um, alternate line when I get to line three. So I will start the song by playing the, um, the second intros and interludes, and then I'll start the song, and I'm going to use the alternate If you um, used it as an ending, after you played the four measures, you'd want to come back to a G chord to end the song. Okay? So now I'll try to do one more. I'll do a clean, um, I'll do a clean play along. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play 
the first line of intros and interludes, play the song through, play the second line of intros and interludes, play the song through using the alternate third line, and then end with the first line again of intros and interludes. So maybe you want to take notes on that. Write that down so you know exactly what I'm doing. I'll say it again. I'm going to play the first line of intros and interludes, the entire line, play the song, and then I'm going to play the second line of intros and interludes as an interlude, go back and play the song and use the alternate line three, and then end with the first line again of intros and interludes, except now I'm using it as an ending. Okay, so I guess I could have called it in intros, in interludes, and endings. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three. Okay, I think, you get, I think I explained it clearly enough that you should uh, get the gist of what I'm talking about. So have fun with that, and um, we will move on from there. Um, I have a couple ideas in mind to add to this. Um, so we will see where we go next time. Any questions? You know where to find me. Bye-bye.